the tool that started it all. You know, the real start to Paratec was the Swedish chainsaw. Now, let's go back. Going back to the 70s, we were traveling overseas to different fire shows. We saw the airlifting bags. There was nothing like it in the United States. Uh, we talked to the proprietor and struck up a deal. We became the U.S. representative. The airlifting bags had some design flaws. It drops on a stem and that's it. Can't fix it. Right, and the control valve, when they broke, they said, no, it cannot be broken. It's made in Germany, it has to be perfect. So we started looking at alternates and discovered a partner in Goodyear Aerospace. They started to use the Kevlar in the tires. We said, we can use them here. Everybody said, oh, you can't do aramid fiber. That's, that's ridiculous. It's not strong enough. It's going to blow up. At the time, the airlifting bags were made with steel tire cord. They corrode. Those wires break, especially on the edges. Sometimes they poke into rubber and they would leak. We developed some prototype with Kevlar. There was a lot of development and trials, but we did it and it works. Meet MaxiForce, the first airlifting bag to incorporate a revolutionary new fiber, Kevlar. Once again, Paratech's cutting edge use of technology drives the industry forward. Today, all high pressure airlifting bags use Kevlar or similar aramid fibers. In the military, they ask us to make some ballistic tests. In the military, they should do it themselves. I had a few different guns, and I got the large bullets, went behind the building, and I was shooting inflated, deflated, bags with the different bullets, and writing the reports. And of course, we were shooting fast, so we were afraid police is gonna come and say, what's going on around here? <laughs> but it was fun. Maxi Force's iconic yellow X has been seen in rescues around the world. After over 40 years of continuous production and improvement, it was time to evolve. Meet the latest generation of Maxi Force. It's a next gen, it's much more capable in terms of its lifting capacities. You get your lift capacity by two things area and pressure. That's what's going to develop your force. We kept the same footprint because we have so many bags on trucks out in the field. We have all of our markings on the bag with uh, the tonnage that it can handle, uh, the air pressures, the recessed nipple. Basically the rubber from the bag is molded around the nipple to help protect it. It was always being dropped on and, and, and drug across the ground. So that, that helped a lot. Its insertion is very thin. The biggest bag is only an inch thick. It's pretty amazing to see the amount of force and load, just dead load that they can lift. From concept to production takes an army of people. It takes the whole Paratech team. Making a G2 bag was, was fun and irritating. Make the prototype, press it, test it, and then it fails in the hydro test. So that's the frustrating part. We went away from the way we fold the material into rubber flow, where to place the rubber, make the recess part of our bag work. Biggest things is attention to detail. A mistake I may make may cost somebody else their life. And like I said, I don't want that on me. Every bag is made with the greatest precision, and no other bag is designed with as many user features as MaxiForce. The only airlifting bag with a truly interlocking surface, centering guides, and highly visible capacity markings. Pushing lifting to new heights, the MultiForce. It was a project that was started when I first started in my career. The most significant, most challenging product that I've been a part of. There's a reason why this product hasn't been copied by anybody. How do you take something that's figure eight shaped and hollow inside, laid up in its raw state, you get it put into a mold and put into a flat state so that it can be vulcanized, so that when it comes out it's flat, or the space that it can be fit into is small. Pretty challenging task there. And without getting into details and proprietary information, took years to develop and a lot of people 
to get that done and be successful with that product. And I think today it's one of the most sought after products in the industry by far. I knew it was gonna be a hit. I said it's convenient, it's quick, and anyone can use it regardless of your strength. The way it was designed, it was amazing. So just really showcases Paratech's abilities and what they can design and manufacture. Over five years of development yielded the most advanced, high pressure, high lift airbag available in the world. There is nothing else like the multi-force airlifting bag. A steady, regulated air supply is the core of any maxi-force or multi-force lift. Finding the balance between being durable and efficient is not always an easy task. Paratech's regulators and controllers have evolved like no other. Meet the first generation controller and regulator. I designed the first regulator here. It was long and it was hard to turn the dial. We had to have a needle bearing inside. So it was expensive. Other regulators used rubber diaphragm. They are not that reliable and they don't last forever. Because what can you invent here? You could machine like this 34 years ago, but today with those machines, you can do anything. The Gen 3 controller and regulator was born from the discovery of a particular technology. The way it works internally is very much opposite to the way the G2 controller works and how the air flows through it, which makes it have less parts, uh, more, more efficient, and just, just a better product. We took weight out of the product, it looks better, we put lights in it. That project was a complete home run. We got rid of a whole separate part. The best part is no part, as far as we're concerned, is <laughs> these guys are tough on, on their equipment, that's for sure. So the, the less that can break, the better. Every time they build something that's new, I take a look at it, I take it in the back and try to break it. I try to break it in an actual application scenario. I put the, the total weight of whatever the vehicle or whatever I'm using and see where the stress factors are, see where, where this thing fails. You know, we, we look at the results and if the results don't meet up those initial specifications that we laid out, we go back to the drawing board and figure out what we need to do to, to get that. Once we are happy with it, we use fire departments to actually put it through its paces. There's really no substitute for actual physical testing. Every day, we're here to manufacture the world's best products for emergency medicine. Our road continues. Come along next time when we uncover where Paratech finds the ideas to create the most innovative tools in rescue.